So we are getting to the next session of today's SMEI final online seminar. So we are in aspects of uh, stakeholders. And our first uh, speaker will be Jukka Lundeen from Biosorpi. And I must say, Jukka will tell an amazing story on how successful you can be in Southern African markets. So please, Jukka. Thank you. Uh, thank, uh, hello, everybody from my side. To don't know about the success, but we try a lot, let's say this way. Um, uh, so uh, my idea is to present them a little bit about the product, then the company, and then uh, I will tell the story of our background, what have we done with help of SMR House and, and uh, production on site. So hopefully I can change the... Right. So a bit about the product itself, which we are doing here, there in Zambia. Uh, we are a little bit different kind of fertilizer and seedbed product uh, than other traditional fertilizers. The main difference is that we don't leach into ground when watering or rainfall. We we don't. We just uh, biodegrade there. Nothing else. And because the beer decoration is a long-term process, uh, we will give crops the nutrients a long term of time. And at the same time, our product is capable to absorb, one liter of our product is capable to absorb uh, 0 0.9 liter of water. And that's one of the main reasons why we decided to go in African markets, because we are a new company, new product, and the uh, industry is very traditional ones, so uh, we feel that uh, with, with this one feature which we currently have, water capability is perfect match for those dry areas and, and, and countries where there is no own fertilizer production at all. Uh, the the uh, idea for this is also based on the fact that uh, our production uh, facility is completely automated and it's packed inside the 20 foot sea container, so it's very easy to uh, move around the world and wherever is needed. And and that's what was, was also one of the big big uh, benefits which we have. So uh, what we are doing at the moment around the world is is based on this mobility. We are working currently in places like USA, Nepal. We are aiming to be in Namibia and Zimbabwe in the near future, and also South Africa is one of the, our target areas. Uh, those uh, product pilots and, and products is long-term uh, goals for us, and uh, currently everything looks quite promising at the moment. Uh, of course, also with this project, we suffer a lot of uh, COVID-19, Pandemia, uh, like uh, the industrial units, took it took uh, uh, almost nine months uh, when we sent it here from uh, Finland to Zambia before it was it was there. So uh, we almost lost more than one year based on the the calendar, based on the delays of what what our projects have been there in Zambia. I was able to, we were able to be there about two weeks ago in Zambia and we kind of launched everything uh, again. And we were also taking part the Finnish business week there and, and uh, received once again great support for, from our uh, embassy there. And Jan, who is also here, special thanks once again to you guys and, and the whole people and stuff from from uh, AGS and, and Embassy, uh, you were great help once again there. Uh, well, the production industry, production unit and the industrial unit, how we call it, uh, it's, uh, as, as you can see in the picture, it's very mobile, it's truly really automated, and we have full capacity to move it, to move it around wherever we want it, and that's in fact what we have done. Uh, already and uh, continue to do. We believe that there is uh, 
better solutions uh, to agriculture industry to to have um, small many small uh, units rather than one big one uh, whatever you think uh, those benefits is one of those are also the environmental issues which you usually have with great uh, big uh, chemical industries we are small we have small units we we have uh, possibilities to compensate them uh, any technical failure very easily we don't uh, our carbon footprint is uh, pretty minimum based on the fact that with from one cubic meter of uh, primary liquid what we call the unit itself produce 48 cubic meter of uh, ready product at site so we have 47 cubic meter of product without any carbon food print or logistic cost or whatever and we don't need to put them in the end end users price also so we are really we can compete with the markets uh, also based on based on the prices what the traditional fertilizers currently have so what we have done so far with the help of SMI there in in uh, there in Zambia in these two pictures you can pretty much see the whole whole uh, journey of ours there we've been able to start there in 2019 finish business week and there you can see that uh, our young lions met the president there and and we get the feedback from from our team about the markets and and uh, how they look it's pretty much very easy to make the conclusion that uh, to sell fertilizers in African countries is like to sell water in, in Sahara but but still there are many other factors which we didn't understand so the the first things we be done there was to be hire ourselves as a local CEO uh, purchase him a vehicle and 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 ask him to drive around the country and and start uh, doing pilots with different kind of soils and different kind of players we have made about uh, 45 different kind of pilots there just before we made the final decision to go there and we we established a joint venture company there and and apply the finnish fin partners business support which we've received and uh, with that uh, funding we build up the first industrial unit there and the right corner you can see that's pretty much the situation today after COVID-19 pandemic uh, and uh, from there we are going to produce uh, start producing the product products and we have also received first big clients already and we are aiming to uh, aiming to reach as many NGO players there to help SME farmers at site as, as many as possible in the near future. At the moment, as mentioned earlier, it's looking very promising. We have, uh, we are confident that we can help the SME farmers in those dry conditions and also those based on those changes, what the climate change size is currently affecting them. And uh, we really feel that we have a right product to, to help them to to grow, make them crops grow and and in the future it's it's looking as mentioned very promising while we have been there we've been also able to connect with several big ngo players like uh, fio yeah and also world food programs and other big play players those uh, players are going to be our main targets in the near future because uh, at the same time there is uh, many possibilities in Zambia but there are, the reality is that the the, pro, the steps to go forward is is to work with these kind of players otherwise you you would uh, face um, many problems uh, concerning their logistics and and also of course the financial side so at the moment uh, in the summer up we look we look very promising the future and uh, let's see what happens 
Uh, all this is, is possible with the great help from SMA Isles and Finnish Fin partnerships and foreign minister and the local embassy, which I strong, ro- strongly recommend everybody who is aiming in African countries to take contact yeah. embassy at, at site. It seems to be so that they are very good and valuable source for you to understand the markets. That's pretty much everything from our side. Thank you. Thanks, Jukka, for a fascinating story. Uh, is somebody here at the audience having some question or comment? To Jukka? Or at the teams? Is there somebody having, having some comment or question? If nobody else is having any, any question or comment, I, I have two questions. So, Yuka, how do you see the Southern African markets? Has it been uh, easier or more difficult to do business than some other areas globally? Well, I can only say say something about the agricultural side, and of course, every country has different ground rules and 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 market rules. Uh, they could be very difficult to handle and also to understand at, at first. Uh, like we also did have some cultural misunderstandings and, and uh, to make them, those clear after, if you talk about the agriculture, agriculture side, the road was very uh, easy for after that, but to to understand those issues which 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 they are suffering and 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 what are the main rules in the market, uh, that's pretty much critical for you. It doesn't matter your, is your product match the need for the market. That's not enough. You need to understand the, how it works and 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 how to reach the end users and what are the rules in general in in every country. To me. Zambia is, is a very full of bureaucracy uh, and uh, like most of the African countries surprisingly have. Uh, so they could take a lot of time to understand how you fulfill those needs before you go to the markets. So I don't recommend anybody to go there and start selling the product without knowledge of, of, about the regulations and terms and conditions locally. So. We did have more than six months before we fulfilled those regulations, and and um, it's very complicated to work with custom also because they have the cultural differences based on what we have here in Nordic countries. But uh, everything is um, possible to negotiate and go forward. And once again. With the, with the best first contact base would be to to contact your local embassy and go forward for, with the help of them. They have a bus there a lot at site to understand and who to contact, and uh, that's we are very grateful also. So to answer your questions, it's very very different than Nordic countries or in Europe to work there, but it's doable. Okay. My second question is that uh, what was the driving force that you decided uh, to go for international markets? So would the, the biosorphia work was in, in Finnish conditions, but what was the driving force to start this journey for international business? Well, the fact is that our product is a new kind of seabed and fertilizer in the market. So we don't have a very much uh, uh, data behind us yet. We have been building up uh, three years now the database from behind our our uh, product, and uh, the markets here in Europe and in Finland also they are her- heritage from father to son. So to get something new there, it's it's really big uh, interest. But before you can do that, and since we didn't have such a huge amount of data behind us, we decided that this one uh, fun, one features what our product have the water capability, holding capabilities is enough to go forward in African countries, 
And based based on the fact that our mo- industry unit is fully mobile, we decided that we will go behind this one feature and build up the data and information uh, in in uh, in other countries than than our home markets and come back later with that data to home markets. So we kind of go around the mo- back to our home markets, uh, but uh, we do it uh, through African countries. Thanks, thanks, Jukka. Uh, and, yep. uh, and my my last question is that uh, so uh, you mentioned some of the the new countries that you are heading, but how, how close is the the success or the new factories, for example, in in Namibia? How long will be the process? Well, it depends on many factors. Of course, we have just yesterday signed a contract with Nepal, so we go there first. We've been working with Nepal already two years, uh, and we have some interest already in Zimbabwe, but uh, it will be number third or fourth in our list to go because it's also located so near the Zambia, so it would be a perfect match to go forward. And, and uh, since we have already a one industry unit, they can cover up them, them uh, to each other if something happens. Thanks, Jukka. Thank As you. I, I've been saying that one of the diamonds of the SMEI project is uh, this Biosorbio. Success in any case, uh, as project partners, we have been helping the companies because the companies are doing the business, of course. So, so great work. Thank and you. We, and we continue uh, in the program. So we have Jan Koivu from uh, Embassy of Finland in, in Lusaka. And before the SME Isle, we have been working uh, with Jan also related for Namibia. So Jan, Jan will present uh, Zambia as business environment and also the AGS program that is uh, co- uh, financed by government of Finland. So, so please, Jan. Okay, thank you. Um, so hope you can see me and hopefully this uh, connection will hold. Um, so my name is Jan Koivu. I'm the Deputy Head of Mission and Head of Cooperation at the Finnish Embassy here in Lusaka. And uh, thank you very much, first of all, Yuka, for those kind words. So that is actually something that we very much do. We try to assist, uh, in, in our case, of course, Finnish companies to access the market um, in, in Zambia, but we also cover uh, Zimbabwe, Malawi, and the Democratic Republic of Congo. Uh, our main actions, however, they are related to, to Zambia, so I'd say 90 to 95 percent of our work is Zambia related. Um, so, as, I'm, as I mentioned, the embassy, um, we've got a very strong uh, private sector focus. Um, so we want to see an increase in in the trade levels between Finland and Zambia in particular, but I think this is a this is a, a um, let's say a feeling what uh, is reflected also in the um, in in the uh, fin- Finnish Africa strategy that we want to diversify our relations with African countries uh, and especially increase trade as well as political ties. So we are very much doing what the Finnish Africa strategy launched last year is talking about. We've been doing that for a number of years. Um, I'm just checking, is somebody else's microphone open or is it just my sound going around? Uh, I think it's just your your sound. Okay, so okay, if you can hear me, no problem. Um, so um, we here at the embassy. So we were a small embassy, but uh, as as I mentioned, our our focus is on the private sector, uh, and that also relates to the development activities, the ODA activities that we have here in Zambia. Um, 
it is very much about private sector development. Uh, I think Yoka also referred to, or was it Minna referred to the AGS program? So that's the Accelerated Growth for SMEs in Zambia program. Um, it's a Ministry of Foreign Affairs of Finland funded uh, program of 9 million euros going towards SME development, as well as establishing partnerships between Finnish and Zambian entities, and also uh, supporting uh, both Finnish and Zambian companies in feasibility studies, as well as providing um, what we call mar market access consultants. So basically, that sort of consulting assignments, what Yuka was referring to, to kind of get through the red tape, for example, um, and help a company decide uh, whether or not they will will kind of you know make an investment decision in into Zambia in this particular case. Um, so there is concrete financial support, and uh, basically we have a roster of consultants that we use um, to, to provide both both Finnish and uh, Zambian companies uh, with these services. And uh, in the case of Finnish companies, I guess predominantly it would be towards the Zambian market, but uh, for Zambian companies who are in our, in our portfolio of about 300 SMEs, uh, it's also about regional markets. So basically a Zambian company or a joint venture looking to establish themselves in in one of the neighboring countries in the region uh, as, as you as you well well may know um zambia of course it's uh it, they don't call themselves landlocked but they call themselves land linked so um zambia shares a border with eight eight other countries namibia of course included as well as botswana um and uh, Zimbabwe, which was mentioned uh, mentioned as well. Um, so basically, it's it's a good uh, good location to go into many directions. Um, and uh, it, it, it's a market of about um, so 19 million people. Just about there will be a census uh, coming up to to kind of validate that but uh, the best estimate is, is around 19 million people 1919 with uh, a very young population so uh, what the government is looking for so we've got a new government since August 2021 um, and uh, they are very much focusing on uh, private sector development and the role of the private sector uh, and in fact, tomorrow um, they will launch a public-private dialogue forum. So basically, the government is taking private sector concerns uh, seriously. And uh, I, I think what we are hearing hearing since these last eight or nine months that the um, the playing field in terms of for companies has become more stable. Uh, and also kind of, you know, it is less preferential towards certain countries uh, as, as was the case in Zambia, maybe in, in, the, in the few years before, before these elections. So um, we recently had our Finnish week of business um, and Yuka was here, for example. We had about, uh, I think we had about 15 Finnish companies uh, coming down coming down uh, also from the Pori region. Uh, so Sampo Rosenlev was also here. Uh, then we had um, somebody from Satakunta Elu Center also also visiting Zambia. So uh, Satakunta region definitely has uh, a good updated knowledge um, of, of where, where the land lies in Zambia. Um, we had about uh, I think our main event, we had about 135 participants uh, with matchmaking for Finnish companies. So basically this annual event, which was now held for the fourth time um, and the second time live, um, it coincided with this Agritech fair. Um, and uh, I, I think it was very, very fruitful. And of course we will, as the embassy, 
we're not just looking to kind of organize events, but we're also looking to support support the companies in in the follow up. And that is also what the AGS program is doing, because, of course, as I mentioned earlier, the AGS program is also about forging partnerships between Finnish and Zambian entities and companies. Um, so basically, the work hasn't stopped once the Finnish week of business was over, but rather we are chasing actively on those leads. And also, if need be, we are also then reaching out to to our participating companies to see where things stand and whether there is something where we could assist as the embassy, in particular with you know these uh, arranging meetings uh, and so forth. Um, but but also if there are kind of you know interesting interesting other initiatives that uh, Finnish or Nordic or Baltic companies uh, could access in terms of finance, for example, in the agro space, that could be something like the Enterprise Zambia Challenge Fund, which is funded by the European Union. Uh, that could be of interest to those companies that have established themselves already in Zambia. Um, and of course, we work closely with Fin Partnership, which Jukka Lundern also mentioned. Um, so you, you could think about uh, our embassy and the AGS program as being something a little bit like a Fin Partnership program on the ground that we, we are kind of actively actively working with with uh with finnish companies and also identifying uh zambian counterparts and possible joint ventures etc uh ba based on based on the requests coming coming from finnish companies uh one final thing i will say um i guess it's good to note and this i think applies more more broadly as well to the Southern African market is that uh, do not expect any quick wins. Uh, it requires uh, it requires your time and it requires, I think, kind of personal relations as well, that you actually come down to the region, meet with people, uh, et cetera, and establish those partnerships and linkages. Uh, the embassy here is very much available for you. Um, so, should you be interested, uh, you know, on in particular on the Zambian market, uh, please do not hesitate to contact us us here at the Finnish embassy. And I will write both my my email as well as my colleague Jenna Kirkari's email into the chat box for future reference. So. Um, once again, I'd like to thank you for this opportunity this morning. And uh, if there are any questions, I'd be happy to take those. Thank you very much. Thanks, Jan. Great talk. And it's it's not a short, short trip to make a successful business in, in Southern African countries. So are there any, any questions or comments? from the live audience here in Rauma. How about, how about in Teams? Surprisingly, I, I have some questions, Jan. So you have a really long experience on, on Southern African markets uh, as working for the Ministry of Foreign Affairs in, in Finland. So. So I think you have really great insight that uh, how would you explain the, the different uh, business culture in different countries. So for example, in SMEI we have been mostly working with uh, Namibia, Zambia and South Africa. So well, what are the similarities and what are the differences? Oh, that's a tough one. Um... I, I guess, I mean, one of the similarities uh, which I already referred to is that uh, do not expect quick wins or kind of one meeting or, you know, one or two contacts. They're not going to kind of get you there. That It will require time. And uh, I, I think it will, in many cases for SMEs in particular, 
you will require support to kind of um, get through this bureaucracy that uh, is is or can be a hindrance in many countries, especially if your product is new and innovative. Uh, there might not be supportive legislation, for example, around. Uh, so that that could, for example, be be one of the challenges. Uh, let's say then, for example, in the space of renewable energy, of course, this is also something that's it's it's quite regulated in many places. Um, so once again, my my tip and advice would be to familiarize yourself with the market. Uh, prior to making any sort of investment decisions. I think uh, all, all three of these countries, having a good local partner is, is very much recommended. Um, and uh, I think all of, all of these embassies, uh, Finnish embassies, so also the colleagues in Vindic as well as in Pretoria, uh, they remain at your disposal in terms of if you are looking for for partners, uh, we've, we've got people that can assist you. Um, also, we have the Business Finland office in, in Johannesburg, but they cover basically, they cover a broad territory. So what we've done, for example, in the case of Zambia is that we we basically have my colleague Yenna is working ex exclusively with uh, with Finnish, Finnish companies and trying to, trying to assist them uh, as, a, as a resource. Um, the other question you had, uh, differences. I, I guess, okay, a key difference, let's say, from, for example, Zambia, of course, is, um, I guess, you know, what is the state of, uh, of the public sector in terms of the debt situation? That's, that's, I think, one important aspect to take into consideration that, um, you know what? What is the public finance? What are the public finances looking like? Especially if if you are looking to kind of you know de deal with government, um, so like a business to government approach, whether or not you know you you have customers basically who are actually actually equipped to uh, uh, obtain obtain your services or products. Um, I, I think also in the case of, let's say, South Africa, uh, of course, there is specific legislation on uh, on ownership, which is very kind of unique to the region. Uh, so we're talking about, uh, is it nowadays, I think it's triple B, double E or triple E, uh, but uh, the sort of uh, policy to kind of um, favor, favor, favor uh, domestic ownership of the previously disadvantaged uh, majority of, of that particular country. So that's also something worth taking into account. Um, but once again, I, I guess, you know, it in any of these, let's say three countries, it requires determination, uh, it requires time, and it requires, let's say, uh, I'm not sure, should I call it background reading or background familiarization, but uh, kind of uh, in Finnish, we would say, uh, don't go taki auki. So um, kind of, you know, be prepared. But uh, I think if you, if you have, if you are patient, you manage to find the right partners, uh, good things will come. So I guess that would be my kind of broad answer. Uh, thanks, Jan. And uh, we were also discussing this in the in the morning session that uh, in SMEIL, the the partners are feeling that it, it has been really great and easy to get, for example, to Namibia because there's like this ten years of cooperation between SAMC, SAMC and uh, the Namibian Namibian colleagues. So it's it's a long term process to cooperate and make business together. My, my last question for you is uh, quickly that uh, COVID has been stopping or slowing the processes. So how does it look for Zambia now? You mentioned that there's been uh, this uh, Zambian Business Week with 15 companies, but how does it see, uh, seem to be generally after the COVID, how, how the business and life is rising up again 
after after post COVID time, so to say. Okay, uh, another very broad question, but I'll I'll try to keep it short. So um, basically, at the moment, COVID uh, is kind of the, the figures are very low in Zambia. Uh, so this has been a trend since the end of 2021. That's I think when we saw the spike with this Om Omicron variant. Um, since then, I think we're talking about less than 1% of those tested have come up with, an, with a positive uh, result. Uh, of course, yes, you can always say, okay, so how many people are getting tested in the first place? You know, that doesn't reflect reality. Um, and I guess to an extent, that's a fair argument. At the same time, I guess, uh, when you look at the population pyramid in this country, it's a very young population. So of course, um, as COVID has, I think it has hit more the aged and the vulnerable rather than the young population. So in that sense, uh, Zambia has been lucky. Uh, throughout the pandemic, the country never had a lockdown. Um, that's that's one thing which is different compared to, for example, Namibia or South Africa. Uh, and uh, I think now kind of when you're going around, uh, there is a very kind of, you know, COVID is around uh, and mostly it's like, yes, you go to the supermarket and you wear a mask and that's kind of your and you get hand sanitizer. But apart from that, you know, um, it's very much, I think it's back to, I, I won't say business as usual because that's not the case, but rather uh, business in a kind of new age. Um, and uh, I, th I think companies have adapted, uh, uh, but you can clearly see this sort of, let's say, um, things are getting back to, what they used to be more or less that you've got you know there is physical events not everything is virtual anymore people are back in the office um and so forth so um the vaccination rate of course as in many countries in the region um and in sub-saharan africa in general uh, it remains relatively low um compared to you know our finish levels for example and it's not necessarily always a question of uh, availability of vaccines but rather the general skepticism towards uh, vaccines i think especially in the beginning uh, when the vaccines first came out and uh, there were some issues with i think it was this astrazeneca uh, vaccine some people and uh, that kind of broke the news quite quick, quickly here in Zambia and people were reluctant to kind of have the AstraZeneca jab, jab at the time. I did have mine and I'm still alive so uh, I guess you know it's it's a sign of something but uh, all in all I think uh, Zambia will continue to experience now we're going towards the winter so i think come you know june july i think we will experience another wave of of COVID. uh whether or not it's going to be weaker uh hard to say but uh, i i think it's in effect inevitable that um with the low vaccine vaccination rate that uh COVID is not over yet but you are able to travel the country. Uh, you are able to enter the country now without providing a negative PCR test. So that was removed at the end of end of February. So uh, which also made our life much easier in terms of the finish week of business because we were actually, you know, able to get our uh, get our participants to come down from Finland without additional kind of uh, sweat drops kind of you know whether or not people get these pcr tests or not so so that was a good thing um and uh one more thing i guess worth mentioning is that uh the visas to to zambia uh the prices have gone down so now it's 25 dollars to enter zambia and you can obtain your visa at the airport so um that's that's also very kind of um let's say um it's a good move by, by the Zambian government.
So um, that's uh, broadly. Any any other questions? Uh, th thanks, Jan. Excellent, uh, excellent answers uh, to hear how the situation is in in Zambia. And, and uh, I think we will uh, move forward with the program. But uh, one highlight I have to say that I, I think you are in, in Zambia and maybe in Lusaka currently, and the web connection has been excellent. So because that's one. Yeah, this, is, this is surprising. That because we have really struggled at times. So I'm very happy that this morning. Uh, our our internet service was reliable so uh thank you once again for for this opportunity and uh do not hesitate to be in touch with either myself or my colleague yenna uh if if you are interested in the zambian market and looking to for example find partners etc so we we can see how we can assist you so uh, I guess I will wish you a very good uh, end of the webinar or seminar or hybrid hybrid NAR and uh, have a good day. Yeah, thank you, Jan. Thank you. Bye bye. Bye bye. And we are moving forward in our program, and we have uh, Her Excellency Sinikka Antila from uh, the delegation of the European Union to the Republic of Namibia. So, Sinika, can you hear us? So we... Yes, yes, I can. I, I can he hear you. I wasn't sure exactly what time you 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 need me, but you uh, know. Yeah, we we thought now it's the, the perfect time. So nice to see okay. you, see you online and actually I have okay, so you... some ostrich also wearing some ostrich eggs today because you are having okay. <laughs> and you also some some. <laughs> local uh, local uh, birds uh, so uh, okay so we're having a uh, question and answer session with Sinika so a bit different than having a PowerPoint uh, presentation so so I, I will read okay. the question and then then you can uh, answer so the first question is that uh, first of all uh, tell who are you and what is your relation to the southern African countries? Okay. Well, I'm a Sinika <clears throat> Antila, and I'm the EU ambassador here in Namibia uh, since uh, September to 2019. Um, I have been serving for Finland earlier, <clears throat> earlier in Southern Africa, both both here in Namibia, but long time ago, and then in Zambia, Zambia also. Um, uh, before Jan, much before Jan, <laughs> also, <clears throat> and. Um, uh, well, yes, uh, at the moment, uh, uh, having this different uh, head of um, heading the EU delegation here, of course, then I'm representing, uh, you know, the whole European Union here, European Union interest, uh, interest in Namibia, uh, trying to strengthen the, the partnership uh, between Namibia and European Union. And uh, um, then we have also a cooperation program. We, we are still implementing European Development Fund uh, programs, uh, uh, the last one, 11. And, uh, and uh, the, now we are programming, busy programming for uh, 2021 to 27. Then we want to encourage a lot trade and investment by the way is my do you hear me properly because i hear some noises on the line we are hearing you very very well from namibia so uh, very good okay yeah side. yes uh, so so it's um uh, it's the um, in a way larger um uh, more wide uh, uh, setting this, this moment uh, and um, of course, as you all know, Namibia is an upper middle income country. So here uh, the aim is, you know, Namibia will not get uh, uh, much grant aid anymore. So, so uh, trade and investment, of course, is more and more important. And um, also the financing, uh, Financing must be diversified now. We 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 need uh, urgently here, you know, all the European Development Finance Institutions um, 
We are having, uh, fortunately now, this week, uh, European Investment Bank, which is the biggest bank. Uh, they are coming here. We have been uh, trying to get uh, them here. Of course, the pandemic may, made it very difficult, uh, but now it's uh, opening, like what, what I heard Jan was saying about Zambia. But we need also the other, because all European countries have uh, have uh, these development finance institutions, so like Finida in Finland and so, so on and so forth. Uh, we need uh, them here. We are also having, uh, and in fact, uh, helping Namibia to get other financial, sustainable financing institu ins instruments at use like like green bonds, what which we are discussing at the moment here, um, uh, meaning that uh, <coughs> we uh, Namibia is willing to start issuing green bonds, uh, meaning that um, they would follow strict uh, sustainability criteria for the pipeline of projects, and then investors come in. And uh, we have been told by financial people in Europe, just looking for good, good, um, uh, sustainable green projects, and Namibia has a lot of potential in uh, in that sense. So, so this is what we are looking uh, looking into at the moment. I don't know. Maybe I went to to to, to some other. <laughs> question already but i can tell more yes yeah yeah that's it. it seems that uh, it's really diverse uh, uh, the ways how you promote and cooperate in practice for, for namibia and eu so that was the the second question so so related for this still uh, to the highlight if you if you mention that uh, two to three main activities what you have in your uh, work uh, between the European Union and Namibia, what are the main, main tools for, for cooperation? Well, uh, politi political uh, and economic uh, partnership, and that includes also, you know, we need to strengthen our co cooperation in the areas where we have a joint interests. For, for instance, you know, climate change issues, uh, biodiversity, uh, uh, greening, greening the you know investments, women, peace, security, these kind of issues, and we are looking forward to working more, for instance, in the multilateral fora in UN, in 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 these issues. Definitely that. And then on our 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 development side, we are we we are. We have different programs still ongoing, and we are our key areas in the programming now. Further years are education. We will continue in education, and there we focus especially on the early childhood development. And then the other area, which is very, um, uh, which we are in fact uh, only now uh, programming, is what we call inclusive green growth. And then we want to look into renewable energy, water, biodiversity issues. And then the third area, which uh, uh, which still is very much needed here, is the governance, good governance, human rights, and there is especially gender-based violence and we, women's rights come in. We do want to uh, uh, promote also, you know, trade, and we do have programs from uh, earlier European Development Fund. We have uh, something called EPA implementation, which which is uh, it's a regional EU SADC program, and uh, Namibia has an allocation of six million euro for Namibia of that, and it's looking at trying to improve the business environment here. There, there is still, you know. Uh, there is still, I think, uh, in in 2020, Namibia was in doing business index uh, number 104 about from the 190 countries. So there is still a lot to do in that sense. So we 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 have this program and it's been a bit slow, 
so we are hoping that we will get these reforms ongoing now. We are adding more technical assistance uh, team there, and we, we believe that that will also help doing business than, uh, than here. And um, uh, uh, yeah, and then we do have some what, something what we call European economic diplomacy. We uh, we we uh, we meet with European uh, European uh, companies regularly here, and and uh, we have put you know we co cooperate closely with the new institution that was established like last year, which is called Namibia Investment Promotion and Development Bureau. Uh, and that was established um, by the president and uh, the CEO for that bureau, uh, president also picked uh, the CEO from the private sector. And their role is um, key in, you know, identifying what are the bottlenecks in do, do, doing business in Namibia. And that's why we immediately, when the, that bureau was established, we decided that um, we will start working with them closely. And we have had like uh, this kind of uh, events where we invite the European companies and this bureau uh, so that they can hear directly uh, from the horse's mouth that what kind of challenges uh, the European companies uh, um, uh, are having. So, so I don't know in which, 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 uh, which uh, question we are now. I have the, here the trade statistics, and uh, by the way, Herve Rousseau just came into my office now. Also, uh, you know, in 2020 trade statistics, uh, China was a uh, first uh, first trade partner, and EU the the second. EU with the 18.8. So, so we are an important uh, trade partner, and you know, Namibia is a mining country, so so L export goods, uh, non-ferrous metals, mineral uh, issues, uh, whatever, fish, fish, uh, uh, like Spain is uh, importing, I mean, ex importing Namibian fish a lot. Uh, um, and uh, and so on. Maybe Herve wants to add later if he wants to add something about the trade. Herve is following the trade issues here. Yeah. So uh, thanks. Uh, great information. So so still a basic question that uh, why companies, especially from Finland, Sweden, Estonia, and Lat Latvia, why they should be interested in certain African markets and especially in Namibia. Why, why, why well, for your yeah. opinion? Well, Namibia is a stable country, peaceful and stable. Uh, Namibia uh, believes in rule of law. It's number one in press freedom. So, so basically the conditions here are very good. It's a small economy though, because it's only 2.5 million population, but uh, Namibia also is developing a lot of the corridors, uh, uh, corridors, it, and it has Valvis Bay Harbor. So from here, uh, you know, it, Namibia serves other, like the landlocked countries in the region, like for instance, uh, Zambian copper is coming, uh, is being exported uh, from, through Namibia and Valvis Bay Harbor uh, and other things, timber products and, and mining, mining pro other mining products. So, so basically, basically that is, and, and as I told you, we are, we are working on the, the you know, doing business uh, uh, thing. There is uh, still a uh, rule to to ro uh, room to to improve, but there are also very very interesting new issues like the green hydrogen. Um, Namibia wants to become a hub for green hydrogen uh, production because Namibia, together with um, 
with Chile have been identified in the world to be key places for and uh, Namibia in fact uh, has even uh, surprised us how well they they have been implementing their plans for this and um, we, we first when we this is a new thing for everybody we are all learning what it is but uh, when we heard last year, we thought that it looks so ambitious that we'll see what will happen. But uh, they have kept all the all the milestones and schedules. And in COP26 in Glasgow, Namibia came to the world uh, knowledge when they announced uh, uh, their plans and even um, uh, announced the first winner of a request of um, uh, tendering in the southern the southern part of uh, Namibia and we have been involved um, closely uh, as EU delegation because we want to make sure that uh, at least European knowledge, European companies knowledge uh, is being uh, used and at the moment there are like three European um, uh, projects already either ongoing uh, uh, ongoing or uh, or in the pipeline and here is of course a lot of possibilities for companies because it's not only the green hydrogen production but it requires a lot of infrastructure you know pipe pipes and uh, even even a new new harbor is be it needs to be built and next to the Luderitz Harbor in the south and and all the other you can imagine all the other activities coming coming from this so so this is definitely something new I mentioned the green bonds that's interesting also for the companies and then a third new issue is what we uh, we pro in in EU we call um uh, partnership for critical raw materials and uh, and uh, this is uh, also something at the very topical time now because the EU Africa summit took place in Brussels in uh, in February and uh, <clears throat> uh, President Genkop went there and and he met President Ursula von der Leyen and they agreed there that we will start building this partnership on on critical raw materials including green hydrogen we included uh, incorporated green hydrogen there and the plan is that um, in uh, later this year in cop 27 then we should sign an mou uh, on that and for the for the this green uh, critical raw materials also I mean the private sector is the key 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 partners so we hope that these uh, new issues would um, uh, start working and uh, it can be a, a game changer in Namibia because at the moment uh, like the um, the, the private sector, genuine private sector, should be stronger uh, to create jobs and uh, that economic growth. But this this can be a game changer if it, if it works like uh, like it is planned. Thank you. My my last question is that uh, when we're discussing about doing business and cooperation, it's about human beings. So. What are the key factors for successful cooperation and uh, for business between Namibia and European Union? Um, uh, uh, what are the key factors? Uh, um, may, maybe I will give soon Herve to say something if it, if it fits, but you know, uh, like always, it's very important to find the right partners because you have to have you have to be established here in a way. So 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 contacts. I mean, 
contacts are key. Either you you come regularly to me personally. I I heard Jan saying the same <laughs> about um, uh, about uh, Zambia. But you know, key is to right, find here key the right partners to work with. There are such partners here who who are here. Uh, you know that is that is. Uh, um, uh, very, very key. But maybe I can, you know, if I, I will take my earphone. Okay, can you still hear me now? Yes, we can. Okay, I will now, and I will turn also, and I, I can let, I will let the hair to. Do you see hair now? Yeah. Hello. Yeah. Hello. Sorry for. I had problem with uh, connecting with, uh, with the, bro the, the browsers that I, had, I was using. Sorry, so I'm only joining you now. So basically, your question is about the key factors, right? Mm -hmm. Yeah. Or anything else you want to complement what I was saying? Okay. I think the, the ambassador was obviously uh, mentioning the, the stable uh, political and macroeconomic situation, although where the countries are all facing some. Uh, uh, big challenges in relation with the uh, economic crisis and the uh, impact of, of COVID. Um, but but, but yeah, we, this is a small population, as you know, but yet we, we could be uh, seen and because of this stability, I mean, uh, as, as a gateway to access Southern uh, Africa, basically. So we, we do have this, indeed, this corridor. Um, uh, yeah. looming ahead, and, and uh, you're probably uh, familiar with uh, the, the one that going from um, a Wildfish Bay to to, uh, to Mozambique. But anyway, so we have um, this project and, 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 uh, and uh, very good potential for obviously capitalizing on natural resources and condition for renewable energy whether it's wind, solar, um, and, and uh, the sea, obviously. Fisheries is, is a very important uh, and aspect. Tourism. tourism. We have also a, a, an educated, skilled uh, workforce that would need to be adjusted to the, to the, the changing needs, but we are working on that. We, we, are, we have been uh, supporting uh, TVET for... for Quite some time together with with our um, German uh, member state, uh, there's also this this special economic zone that is being uh, uh, considered and and designed. Also, um, we are we are looking for for a partnership in this area. I mean, together with with Germany also. Um, basically, uh, yeah. Again, this is, this is for us. Uh, I mean. Uh, a, a, a very good condition and the road infrastructure is very good as well. We're number one in Africa, which is also a, 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 a good argument. So, 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 and now, as the, the ambassador was saying, uh, we, we are preparing for this uh, business forum. Mm. It, yes, it, 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 I it, forgot to say. Ah, you did. Yeah, yeah, it's, yeah. Okay, so in October, to, together with NIPDB, we will follow the EU Angolan uh, business forum that took place uh, a few weeks ago, and we are already preparing for it and uh, engaging uh, the, the, the technical uh, assistance facility, the same one that was used uh, by by our Angolan uh, neighbor and uh, the EU delegation. So we we hope to be uh, uh, capitalizing a lot on uh, on. Uh, the, the, the outcome of, of this business forum. Uh, and obviously oil, um, you know, that is being now uh, discovered, I mean, uh, Shell and, and uh, Total uh, is, is, is a, a very good uh, attraction factor as well. But, but again, I mean, around this basically um, sectors like mineral, uh, uh, extracting industry, there are a lot that we, we can uh, again capitalize on here in, in Namibia. Thank you. Yes, I, I indeed, you know, we are planning this EU Namibia Business Forum, and uh, 
um, we 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 have uh, we have only had one meeting on this, but you know we have something happening here, and then if we if we get funding right, then in Brussels, and it would be could would be also hybrid, so so also those who cannot come in person uh, could participate, and uh, of course if it's easy it's easy to come to Brussels if if, if something happens there, so. But we, we we are at the start of our planning, but we hope we can we can we can do it still th this year. Okay, I have uh, still one question for you. So okay. uh, so related for the for the Latvia uh, that uh, can you Dines, you get come to ask the, the question. Okay, thank you for this opportunity. Uh, well, the question is, is in fact very simple. Within our project, we have a number of uh, pro number of uh, projects that were initiated quite successfully, and uh, some of them might have even some, I wouldn't maybe not if not strategic importance, then then quite uh, high uh, business importance for Namibia. That that's like we suppose, and in uh, of course during COVID we experienced a lot of. Uh, Problems. Some things were like, like for instance, like for fish processing industry, we had a problem. We had a project for a, a new fish factory, and then uh, then there were problems with uh, fish quota and so on and so on. And uh, are there, uh, is there a way how uh, like uh, we could apply to you or to get in consultation with you regarding those uh, initiatives uh, that might be mutually beneficial, also in some way, green course. Uh, uh, kind of the uh, way like like uh, solar energy and so on so how we could uh, get in contact with you and discuss those issues because we're also planning some kind of uh, uh, travel to Namibia by the end of the this year as well and we would like really hope for to get some kind of assistance or advice yeah. how to proceed in the best ways and so on and so on thank you very much okay see you maybe and and then let let us know when when you are coming we can meet with you uh and then uh, very important is this uh, bureau we we new uh, bureau nibdb namibia investment promotion development bureau because they have a team of people it's supposed to be some kind of a one-stop shop you know for especially the you know foreign businesses and investors so so, uh, well, of course, I don't know now, uh, I haven't had direct feedback how do, from companies, how do they work, but their role is exactly to, to, to help uh, those who want to come here. But we are available, of course, we are always available. Me or Herve, uh, when you let us know when you are coming even even what kind of we want to learn what kind of uh, problems uh, European companies face in doing business here. Thank you uh, Sinikka. Okay? Yeah. So uh, thank you very much for yeah, there was just still one, one last yes. question that uh, are you concentrating just for Namibia or some other um, countries? No, no, we are, uh, we are the EU delegation to Namibia. We have EU delegation in every every SADC country here. Okay. So so there is one in uh, Lusaka, there is one in Gabarone uh, and so on and so forth. But of course, we have regional programs, you know, uh, like this, what I mentioned, the EPA implementation, it is EU SADEC, it's part of the EU SADEC program, and we have many regional programs, also in uh, environment, uh, water sector, port security, you know, we have some important issues, you know, and those are regional, so, so but, but we cover Namibia, so I cannot go to I cannot go to Zambia to talk as you, uh, my colleague uh, uh, will be there. Okay, thank you. But I, I think that's also a great network that the European Union can uh, can support the companies and other stakeholders in in uh, yes. 
marketing as a whole. Yeah. So the thing what what I need to say, of course, you know, we are. We are organizing this, um, you know, to 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 collect, bring European companies together for for dialogues. But of course, it is the countries that have companies, because as an institution, we we don't have companies. It's Finland, Latvia, Estonia, Sweden, the, who have the companies. So. So we have to work closely, and if, as a company, then it's always good to 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 inform both the, your own country uh, re representation. But I know that you all of you don't have uh, everywhere. Like Latvia is represented. Uh, you know, we have only five uh, uh, embassy member state embassies here. We have Germany. France, Spain, Portugal, Finland, uh, and and I have 16 uh, embassies and ambassadors in Pretoria covering covering uh, uh, Namibia, and one uh, Ireland is in, in in Lusaka. So so of course then it might be easy for you who who do, don't have your own country embassies you can uh, come to come to us and we will we will brief brief you thank you and one more if i can say one more hint is that you know for namibia the colonial power germany is a very important country here it's by far the most important development partner providing that kind of assistance but you know, so if you are partnering uh, with uh, German companies, it might be a good, good, good way. And I know that I know from my previous work with Finland that there is with Finland there is even a deal with uh, German business council so that they will help people. So remember that also. Thank you, Ambassador. Excellent question and answers uh, session, and thanks for the for the information. And I, I cooperation is continuing, and we will flourish things after after this COVID era, so to say. So, thank you from our side okay. here, from Sunny Rauma. And we are continuing. Okay. <laughs> yeah, and we are continuing. Okay, uh, thank you. So much. Yeah, thank you, thank you. Okay, thank you so much. Okay, bye. Bye. So we are we are continuing again here from Rauma. So we have uh, Captain Heike Koivisto from SAMK and uh, as I was saying in the morning session that Heike is veteran for the cooperation in, in Namibia and South Africa. So he will give an overview especially for the especially for the maritime cluster. And after Heike's presentation, we will have uh, Jarno Laine from uh, Entec. So I will share the screen. Please. So, very good afternoon from still sunny Rauma. <laughs> been signing all day so the people on online so why not visit Rauma one day to see the sunshine so welcome so uh, yes especially the Namibians yes so uh, I'm uh, well Minna Dr. Minna was saying veteran of Namibia so but uh, I'm telling about our first steps in, in Namibia and the Southern Africa area. In my presentation, it's, it's, it's mostly about shipbuilding and maritime sector, the sectors which I, I think I know something. I'm a captain as, as my profession and I still have a valid captain certificate. So I, I, I'm still sailing. So last, last summer we did the Test sailing, I was the test captain for the old new building ships here in Rauma shipyard. So last last year we we, we tested the Aurora Botnia new 
the world, world most environmental friendly ferry built here in, in Rauma shipyard. And uh, for this summer, there will be new Tallinn Ferry My Star waiting, waiting the turn. And uh, every project must have a, have a good project name, acronym. I, I remember we had one FP7 project. It was a very good project, but the name was Hostes. So it was reacted. And reviewers said that change the name. So we changed the name next year, Seahorse. And we were successful. We get the FP7 financing. So name is uh, extremely important. And for example, the, the name of this project uh, got, got the birth in, in an airplane. So when, when sitting in, 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 the, in the seat and thinking that what can be the name of this kind of export project, so there was, there was a, a text in, in the back of the seat that ale. It could be also center or window, as Dr. Minna, who is the mother of the project, of course, the big innovator. So, so that, 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 this is the way how this project got, got the name. So uh, I go a year longer than the speakers earlier, 2012, it, it, it really started. The, uh, the cooperation with Namibia first trips happened, uh, took place then. But the uh, first time the, uh, the Namibian people came, came at the office here, uh, 2011, and said that uh, we might have uh, some proposal for, for you for, for training. And then we started the cooperation with the uh, Namibian Fisheries and, and Maritime Ministry. And uh, uh, this ship, Mirabilis, her work is to, to take fish samples and all the quotas are based on, on the amount of fishes, how much fishes you have at the sea. And of course, they follow, follow the quality of the sea, seawater and so on. Uh, 2012, this ship left Rauma and sailed to, to Valvis Bay, uh, 6,600 miles. And last day of, of July, they arrived and there was a big balloon <laughs> took place. So they, they, they did the red, red route, more or less. After the first project, well, the, it was still running the, the Marinam project together with the Finnish uh, Environmental Institute. Uh, we started to talk with the people that maybe, maybe there is a place for improve the maritime training on, on, on whole uh, Namibia. And, and then we were bringing their examples from, from Finland, from our maritime cluster, where we have about 50,000 people working and turnover is something like 15 billion euros. Uh, and uh, th this is quite normal in many, many countries that, for example, education is, is not connected to the uh, industry. The educators are doing their work in the school and then the, the, the students go to other world. <laughs> but, but this was Definitely one thing what, what, what we like to bring, because we had the very good examples from Finland, that, that we, we work as part of the maritime cluster. So, so, the, so the contacts can st start from here. We call to the industry, all the industry calls us. So the connection is, I can even say it's, it's a daily with different companies that how, how, how we can solve, there's a new, new kind of idea Let's, let's, let's put our head together and, and let's start working with it. So here is the example what, what we then wrote for the maritime cluster of Namibia. And, and it, it was in, in a way 
eye-opening thing that you, when you started to list the different companies and, and different branches that, hey, yes, this is, this, is a, this, is a, this is a big industry, by the way. And, and we can see from these eyes that uh, we drew these windows, the, the shipyard, but just before the shipyard, there's the big Kongsbury uh, propeller manufacturing uh, industry. And uh, there is one Kongsberg office in uh, whole Africa, and that's in Valvis Bay, Namibia. So there we found immediate connections together. Always go the wrong way. So we've, we found good partners from the Namibian maritime cluster, Namport, for example, the, the port operator, the, uh, the EU ambassador, Sinikantila, mentioned the, the hydrogen that it will be bring a new port close to the Luderit. So there in, 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 in Namibia, there are two ports, even, even the, the, it's 1,500 kilometers shoreline. So there are two ports. Val, uh, Valvis Bay is the main port. And uh, during the time we came the first, first time and 2019, uh, they expanded the port with the 300 million euro project. So there's a new container terminal, there's a new cruise vessel terminal. And uh, now we can see from the news that the cruise ships are again coming to visit Valvis Bay. But uh, with our thoughts and ideas, we have found, for example, uh, Namibia can be a good crew chains port. There's a good flight connections. There are very good airports. You can fly to Valvis Bay, crew on board, other crew off. It's safe. You don't have to, you don't have to worry about your, your crew. Will they reach the ship or not? There's definitely a place for STCV refreshment training site for these kind of crew changes and, and the new, new thing. And uh, Jan Koivu from, from Lusaka uh, mentioned the new, new name. So I, I, I've been used to it to say that landlocked countries, but they, they are nowadays landlinked countries. <laughs> it sounds much more positive in, in a way, but for, uh, for, a sh for example, for Valvis Bay port, uh, these landlocked countries are very important. Where they ship their mines and, and so on. So it's definitely from the uh, Valvis Bay. And here you can see roughly the figures, what had happened with the, with the, with the Valvis Bay port. They are from 2013, there are 6 million tons, then there was whoop down to 3 million, but then, then up again. So more, more or less, it's quite steady business. And, and I think it's growing. Shipbuilding, uh, Namdok, they have uh, maintenance, many, many oil rigs. And, and as we heard earlier that they, uh, finally they found oil from the Namibian waters. So they, they, during the 10 years I've been in Namibia, they've been drilling yearly. And, and the Namibian magazine is telling that now this year we made 15 dry holes, but next year again. Now, and I heard it's quite, quite nice, nice amount of oil and, and, and gas available. But um, this shipbuilding thing, is definitely they are, they are well positioned. Uh, they have a sheltered port so that the ships can weigh at, at the roads, so anchored, and then, then go to the shipyard. And uh, I presume there, there is a lot of to do with the Namdok, with the oil, gas, and, and cruise industry in, in the future. The ambassador mentioned, mentioned the fishing. So this is from the, one of the fishing trips we, we did with the Mirabilis. Nice trips. 
and uh, we, there we are. Just had took uh, one trawl up and and uh, discharging the fish in in the special laboratory where they are then separated and the examples are, are taken from the fishes. And they are excellent fishing waters. Uh, uh, at the sea there is more seals than there are Namibians. The seal just need to open the mouth and it's fed. So it's so simple for, for even a young seal to, to get the food. So uh, uh, there are uh, there are a lot of fishing vessels, and then when when the when the high tide is coming, there are a lot of people throwing the rods from from the coastline and getting their buckets full of fish easily. It's but you need the permission for that, and there is a police and inspector checking that you have a permission to do it. And then one, one thing uh, Ambassador mentioned, uh, the fishing and the tourism. So this kind of laser fishing, it's, it's a uh, good touristic possibility because with the, with the tourist people from Europe, for example, the, the average trip is three weeks, 21 days in, in Namibia. So they land in Windhoek stay first night there, go Joe's beer house to have the game, game meet and then start driving with the four, four times four field Land Rover or whatever car up to the Etosha that they spent again maybe five days seeing all the possible wildlife. Then they start to drive back uh, to, the, to the coast. They go one, one day for the uh, big seal colony up in the north, spend there one day. The, you can really smell when you're approaching the area because the seals, <laughs> they, they produce a little bit of smell. And, and then, then you start to drive down, down to south. So first there is Fagopmund. It's a very, there you meet a lot of German peoples from, from the background, but there you can go with, with the boat for fishing. So I, I really love the idea that you, Nearly every throw you get the fish, different fish, small, big ones, red, white ones, <laughs> blue, whatever. And then you take them to the restaurant and the cook will make it for you. What an, what an event. As you can see, this gentleman here, he is smiling with his whole face that, hey, I got the fish and now, now I get, get food. Of course, there are competitors, so you can see there's a pelican waiting that, hey, if you slip the fish, I will take it. Horse mackerel is, is one very important uh, fish, and you get that a lot from, from the Sea of Namibia. Uh, we were talking with the fishing industry, a lot of that, the, uh, they are only trying the fish. And then they, they, they fill up the lorry and drive inland and they sell as long as there is dry fish in, in, the, in the lorry. And then they turn back and get the new, new, new load. But uh, in, in Portugal I saw that this, this fishing company, this table is full of horse mackerel products, added value. So I would say that these kind of uh, uh, opportunities shouldn't miss. So there is material, you just need to have a little bit cook style and, and then you can do these kind of nice things. We will hear today uh, Professor Dr. Uh, Samuel John from Namibia University of Science and Technology. They've been our good, good partners in, in, in education and, and uh, we started with them this uh, maritime engineering double degree in one project and uh, after the studies now in, in Namibia, they are, they are coming to study here in Rauma next fall. Uh, this, this has been postponed due to the COVID-19, but now, now the first group is coming here. And then People were asked that nice memories from the roads and, and so on. So 
definitely I took, took the one event. There was more than 150 participants in that one event in the big, big auditorium in, in Namibia University of Science and Technology. And I was, I was really pleased to see that, hey, how, how easily we can connect the people, the companies and, and continue like this. And then there are uh, different events what you can easily remember. It is a, it is a cat story. One, one Finnish lady asked us that, can you, can, no, not, not Dr. Minna, that can you, can you bring her dog, uh, cat to Finland? And I was asking these two gentlemen that I hope you are allergic to the cats, but they weren't. So I could only answer to the lady that, okay, we can take the cat with us, but you had to arrange all the paperwork. So it's, it's very challenging to do the paperwork and it's old cat already 18 years old. And, and she promised to take care of that. And we were just waiting in Svagopmund one morning because that day we were driving to Valvis Bay 400 kilometers roughly. Uh, the cat came. Yeah, we, we put the big box on the back seat and, and our, our ca Canadian virtuos, he's a cat person. They, they spoke immediately the same language. So we put Jeff sitting next to the cat. Matti started to drive and, and I, I rested a little bit in the, in the front seat. And Jeff has a lactose intolerance tolerance and we were not sure what did he took in the breakfast. Because somewhere in 150 kilometers we started to smell with Matti that Jeff has taken something milk or something like that. The smell is, smell is here like, but then Jeff woke up and said that, hey, <laughs> where is the, this smell coming? And then we were looking at the cat that it must be from the cat. So we, we made immediately short term, short term strategy that can we continue 250 kilometers still to, to Windhoek, the capital city. It's the third largest capital city in the whole world, thanks to the area, what they have. And plan, plan was quickly so that we had to stop <laughs> immediately. And then I made, made the plan that how we will do. We will do so that because the cat has been nervous and had, you know, emptied <coughs> the back part in, in the box and there was a lot of something brownish. And uh, I said to Jeff that you're the, you're the friend of the cat, you hold, you hold the cat. So we stopped middle of nowhere, so there was only sand all over. And I said to Jeff that you had to hold it. If, <laughs> if she runs away, we're in a deep trouble. We can't get her anymore and then maybe the lion eats it. Okay, and Jeff, as you can see, is holding the cat heavily. And then you can see other specialists, I said that here are these wet tissues. You had to clean the cat because it was brownish also. And the guys were asking me, what are you doing? I said, I'm taking photos. <laughs> so now you can see one photo that I didn't know that it's going to be on the screen on the, on the final seminar, but it's there now. And when you start to look Africa, Namibia is two and a half times size of Finland, two times uh, Sweden. When you start to put the other countries inside the China, uh, like China, it's about half. United States, you can really see that it's a, it's a, it's a huge continent and it's giving uh, uh, huge opportunities for the business. And this is photo from uh, Port Elizabeth, Nelson Mandela, Maritime University with Greg Davis, uh, with the South Africa. We, we started the cooperation exactly similar way like we did to Namibia, with the ship. So shipyard built the ship, S.A. Agulhas, to, 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 to South Africa. And uh, if you follow the news in the winter time, uh, this ship was the one who found the endeavor which was on the surface last seen 1915. And now we can see the photos 
uh, from the bottom so it's it's nicely still still going there so i i think it will be a very famous place to visit and our co cooperation continues with the south africa we have a eurosa project and uh, there are delegation coming to visit us in 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 the late may so they come coming from the uh, cput cape town and then Port Elizabeth from that school, what I saw earlier, and then from Durban University of Technology. So that, that cooperation continues. And that ship, by the way, it found the Endeavour uh, Endurance, and then uh, it's an icebreaker, it's a passenger vessel, it's a general cargo vessel, it's, a, it, it's whatsoever. And for example, we did the cargo securing manual together with our students to that ship, and it was a very nice project. But I think I will, I will stop about here now. Dr. Minna has been showing that stop immediately. <laughs> do, you, do you have a question? I have, I have one question. Okay. So, so there's been a lot of uh, discussion today about uh, Namibia and uh, Zambia. So, so we have been working with the uh, maritime cluster for, for South Africa. So how, how do you see the, the business uh, future? With, with South Africa, so there's already ships uh, sold from uh, from Greenland to, to South Africa, but in, in a broader context, well, what's the future? Yes, uh, in in Namibia they found found the oil wells, uh, same on the other side. So, for example, when we were visiting different shipyards in, in South Africa, so they were they were very optimistic that they will get the big portion of building the, the ships what are needed in the offshore operations. But they are lacking about the uh, engineering skills. So there is definitely uh, a European shipbuilding capabilities and, and the brains needed one day, sooner or later. And like I said, the, the maintenance of the ships, it's a big, so the specialists are needed to, to, to take care of the uh, offshore vessel, for example. So, uh, actually, when you talk with the uh, talk with the uh, engineers from Kongsberg who go to to take maintenance on on the offshore vessels, nearly everyone has been one or twice at Walvis Bay making making the maintenance. So it's quite well known well known uh, port in in the among the Finnish engineers. Thank you. The, this sunshine is from Svagopmund. <laughs> sun, sun is going down. And so I will hand over to Jarno on, online. And I will put still SMEL cap for the next event on my head. Thanks, Heikki. Maybe I'll. Uh uh, not just value promise, but proven value that uh, we have been achieving is that SME IL team takes uh, care of whatever is needed, even transportation of, of the cats. So uh, let's uh, move forward with the uh, program. Uh, so we are having Jarnaline. I think Arno, you are also in, in Rauma, but not, not here where the others are. So, so please, the floor is yours to uh, tell, tell the EnTech story and, and the broader, broader aspects for the business cooperation and educational cooperation in, in Namibia. Thank you, Minna. Uh, Can you now see my slides in there? Yes, we can. Okay, yes. So, hello, everyone. Uh, my name is Jarno Laine, and uh, I'm representing Entec. Entec is a service and maintenance supervision company for electrical systems, electrical installations, and automation systems. So, we are providing technical consultants and supervision for industrial customers. 
And uh, for the beginning, a bit about me and a bit about Namibia and Rauma. So, as I told, my name is Jarno Laine, and uh, I have I have spent about uh, seven months in Namibia totally in uh, in almost in a all, all different places in Namibia. I have been traveling a lot as a tourist and as a volunteer worker yeah, at 2003. So that was the first time for me in Namibia. And uh, after some years, I find it myself again working with Namibia and Namibians uh, as a consultant in Maribia and Maribilis projects that some has had. And uh, I'm also helping NAST, Namibian University of Science and Technology as a course moderator about those ship electrical courses that they are having. And uh, these pictures are from the from the trip that we had with my wife and children. So I can say that I really like Namibian Namibian nature also. So a, a couple of pictures about the history. Uh, it was September 2002, then I got an email that uh, Onipa Environmental Project was uh, searching uh, volunteers to work in North Namibia in Onipa, Ondangwa area. And uh, I, uh, I was not the I was not uh, as much much interested of that for the beginning. I was thinking that no, I'm I'm just getting back to Rauma and I will work as a normal as a service service guy for the industry side. But then my girlfriend, that is now my wife, asked that uh, you should think once more about this uh, this might be important for your future for your future to to go to Namibia and do part of the studies in there and then I applied and I was selected and and after a couple of months I I fly to Namibia it was my first time in Namibia, first time in Africa, and first time in airplane also. So it was four months at that time that we were living living in Onipa area, and it was really nice time in there. And a lot of things happened. They say that every step has a reason, every dance has a story. And during the different years and projects that I have been, I have had uh, many opportunities to work with Namibians and uh, of course great moments uh, in Namibia and in South Africa also. And a lot of friends, friends in there and a lot of Knowledge about different cultures and also about us in Finland. That what kind of culture is 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 this that we are having? Uh, SME ISO. It's a great platform to get new opportunities, to get new contacts and. Uh, new kind of business openings to companies. I'm sure that uh, I would never had any any kind of business with Namibia without SME Aisle. Uh, Minna and Heikki 
have encouraged me at the beginning that uh, of course it's possible to do something in Namibia. So then I just stepped a bit forward and uh, started to started to check that what kind of business can be find it also from there. And uh, as Minna told, Entec is also situ situated in Rauma as uh, some and uh, Rauma Marine Construction that Heikki was talking about. And there is also a lot of different projects and companies that have cooperated with Namibia. Just to example that Arve Mirabilis receives vessel and uh, we have also had a teacher education for Namibians and uh, this marine engineering double degree with SAMC and NAST uh, projects from Rauma to Namibia, Maribilis, Marinam, Maribia, SME Aisle, Nam Urban, Nam Hub and these two higher education cooperations with the teacher education and maritime engineering. Companies, SAMC, University of Turku, Vinnova, Port of Rauma, Rauma Marine Construction, Ion Sign, and of course, Entec. And uh, I, I also find it out, I was writing in Google, Rauma and Namibia, that we are also having a uh, having a person working in a theater of Rauma named Jukka Uusitalo, that uh, he is a graphic designer. He has designed the Namibian coins at 1993. So we have also that kind of link between the Rauma and Namibia. But uh, that that was the four words. So a little bit about Entec and what we have done during the years. So we are providing technical consultancy supervision and spare parts to all kind of electrical and automation systems to marine and industrial applications. Uh, it it means that uh, whenever you are having problems with uh, electrical automation systems, we will try to help you to solve the problems. It might be that we can directly help you or we can uh, link you with uh, with the company or with the person that can help you with that. In that case. So we, we will be the link between you and the, and the <coughs> final uh, partner that will help you. During the SME Isle project, Antec have had many interesting contacts with Namibian companies, and also some of the contacts have led us to the business cases. So there has been a couple of euros or Namibian dollars also changed between us and customers, and a couple of problems has been solved. So I think that's that's the always the main thing that uh, customer customer can get get the problem solved. Of course, uh, there was a COVID forcing us uh, from 2019 and. Uh, it made the cooperation a bit difficult. So we firstly we stopped it a bit and then we had to find 
out the new ways to work with the emails, Teams meetings, videos, pictures, things like that, that are not common in service and maintenance field as much, even nowadays. And uh, I think uh, it, it will be our strength in the future that uh, the uh, we can we can provide uh, consultants directly from Finland without flying to Namibia or other places in the world. It's much easier and cheaper also to the customer. So thank you for SMA Isle and everyone that has been part of the projects. And thanks all of the opportunities that we have had. And uh, just to remind, if you have problems or you know someone that is having problems with electrical systems or automation systems, to find a supplier for the spur parts, find the compatible spur parts to all the systems, solve the technical problems in the electrical or automation systems or detect the possibilities to improve your energy efficiency just give me a call and i will help you to go further with that one okay thank you everyone thank you Jarno. Uh, I think you uh, stole the term of uh, veteran of Namibia from Captain Heikki. <laughs> <laughs> so, so you are really, really a veteran for for Namibia. So, is audience having here some questions or comments to Arno or at the teams? I, I'm having. <laughs> okay. Basically. So, can can we say that you have like 20 years of experience? For, for Namibia? Uh, something like that. Yeah. So you, you have really a long long insight. Uh, so how, how do you see that uh, has Namibia as a country or as, uh, as uh, with the humans, how it has been changing in the uh, past 20 years? Or is it still the same country as it was when you uh, went there first time as a, as a volunteer? Uh, if I compare it to that time, I can see that uh, there, there is happening the same thing than in Finland, that uh, people are moving to the towns, the towns are getting bigger and uh, there is more shops and uh, uh, that, that kind of, so the, I think the business, business is growing up in there just the same way and it's it's getting more like uh, like we have in Finland yeah there is a lot of development happening all the time okay so 20 years of history but how about 20 years of future so how do you see that how, how Namibia and Southern African countries are developing in, in coming years and what could be or should be your role and your company's role in this uh, development that is ongoing? Uh, there will be a lot of development, of course, uh, more, uh, more industry will start, start up in Namibia more companies uh, uh, and uh, I think there is uh, some some needs for the education because of new te technology that uh, have to be have to be done uh, and uh, what, what else I can say yeah my role uh, of course there will be more industry more new 
new kind of automation systems. I'm ready to help everyone that is working with them in there and having problems. So I think there is a lot of possibilities also for the business. Now, my, my last question is that, uh, that the Entech uh, is really strong in, in Namibia, but uh, how, how do you see the other, other countries? So do you see potential for, for example, for South Africa or for, for Angola or other, other, other countries near Namibia? Or, because I, I know your company is also rather small, so is it also about uh, the resources that you can provide? Yes. Yeah, I think uh, expanding to other countries, it's it's not the goal that I'm having at this time. But uh, of course, I'm mainly working by those emails, and uh, I'm consulting from Finland. In in that case, it's not a problem also to help someone in other countries. So it's. It's not a border in in that way. So if if someone needs help, I will try to find out the ways to solve the problems. Yeah, thanks, Jarno. So it's quite close two o'clock here in Finland. So we will have a thirty minutes break for coffee and refreshments here in in Rauma. And then we are continuing in, in 30 minutes uh, with more aspects of the stakeholders. So see you in, in 30 minutes.